Greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us visit the book of the prophet Daniel. Our sermon is titled, If, but if not. If, but if not. These are the ways of the king Nebuchadnezzar uh, when he summoned Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And he told them, that when they will hear the sound, he gave them a second chance. Those who know the king, they said that king was a very harsh king. He was a king of no second chance. If he says to you, stand up, and you don't stand up, you will never stand up again in your life. That was Nebuchadnezzar. We are looking at the book of Daniel chapter 3. We'll read the first six verses, and then we'll skip to verse 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. I'm reading the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, and also 14 to 18. It reads as follow. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Jura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, 
the treasurers, the councillors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Take note of verse 3. Then the princess, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Verse 4. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Verse 6, And who saw falleth not down and worship it, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Verse 14, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Verse 15, Now, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if you, will, you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Oh, what a king. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Please note the importance of verse 17. This gentleman, some says they studied the book of Isaiah 43, verse 2, where God says, if you pass through the waters, they shall not take you away. If you come to the fire, the fire will not consume you. So they came here and they did not walk by sight, but they walked by faith, believing that the God they worship is able and indeed will deliver them. Let me read again verse 17. It's crucial. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Listen to verse 17. They don't say maybe he will deliver us. They don't say if he likes, he will deliver us. They say our God whom we serve he is able and he will deliver us. Verse 18, but if not, question, if not what? Because in verse 17, they said our God is able and he will deliver us. So verse 18 is problematic. For listen what the implication it gives. But if not, if not what? Are they now negating or contradicting the upper verse, verse 17? Are they saying now they're starting to doubt that God will not deliver them? I'm having a different view. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Let us pray. Lord, your word is sharper than the two-edged sword. As we go through the book of Daniel, open, Lord, our understanding of this apocalyptic literature. In Jesus we pray. Amen. The book of Daniel begins with King Nebuchadnezzar having erected an image in the plain of Jura. But for background, maybe let's go back. Let's go back to chapter 1 
and understand how it came about that he erected this image. In chapter 1, he, he has taken God's people from Jerusalem. He took them captive. And when he took them captive, he took the vessels of, of the God of the Israelites. So according to him, he has defeated the Israelites and their God. So he is carrying a trophy, which is their God. It is said in the ancient times when nations were fighting, the gods of those nations also were fighting. If I fight you and you fight me and I defeat you, it means my God also is more powerful than your God. So Nebuchadnezzar, when he took these God's people, took them to captivity. In his mind, he defeated the Israelites. He defeated their God also. He takes them. And when they come to Babylon, they select few. He says, choose some, not everyone. They choose some. They took some of the children of the royal tribe of Judah. And when they chose them, four boys are mentioned. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. These, by the way, are the Babylonian names that were changed. Their names were Mishael, Azariah, and Mishael, Azariah, and Hananiah, and Daniel as well. So their names were changed. What the king was doing to change a nation, change their culture, change their names, change their diet. It's what we find in chapter one. They changed their diet. They changed their name. They gave them the names of the gods of Babylon. So Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, these are Babylonian names that belongs to the gods of Babylon. And Daniel's name was called uh, Bel, Bel, Belshaz, Belshaz, Belteshazzar. So his name also was changed according to the god of Babylon. Number two, they changed their diet. They were to eat in the ta at the table of the king. And Daniel stands up and he says, no, we don't eat like this. So in short, don't eat everything that is put before you and don't drink anything that is brought before you. This is a lesson we learned from Daniel. He says, give us legumes, give us water to drink. And the man said who was in charge of them, you will put my head in trouble. When the king shall see your face, that it is uh, uh, not as fatal as the other boys. He says, test us 10 days. What? Important. Test us for 10 days. And indeed, 10 days comes, they, they are being tested. They, are, they were selected. They've gone past through the selection process. As they were selected, they are now going to the University of Babylon. And as they are in the University of Babylon, they were given the curriculum. They had to study. At the end of their three-year degree, they had to be interviewed, come before King Nebuchadnezzar. The king himself is the one who was to interview them. So that tells you what? It tells you that Nebuchadnezzar himself was one of the wisest, most intelligent kings. So 10 days comes. After 10 days, when the man looks at them, they were more fatter, more fairer than the, the Babylonians. So they were allowed to continue with their diet. And come three years later, they stand before Nebuchadnezzar, the king himself. And when he interviews them, he gets a shock of his life. These boys are more intelligent, 10 times more intelligent than the Babylonians. I'm tempted to say, they said, test us for 10 days. And God gives them wisdom and they become 10 times more intelligent than the Babylonians. And after being interviewed and all, we come now to chapter 2. In chapter 2, the king had a dream that he could not forget. Neither could he remember the details of the dream. So he called all his wise men of Babylon and he says to them, men... Come with your assistants. You are able, the astrologers, the soothsayers, the, the, the readers of the stars, and all these wise 
men of Babylon. They were brought before the king. And listen what the king says. He says, I had a dream. A dream that I cannot remember. Neither can I forget it. And I imagine the astrologers looking at the magicians. And the magicians looking at the soothsayers. And the king said to them, tell me the dream and its interpretation. And they are quick to say, oh king, live forever. Tell us the dream. We will come with the interpretation. He says, no, the thing is gone from me. If you tell me the dream and its interpretation, you will get rewards from me. But if you do not tell me the dream and its interpretation, your houses will remain a dunghill. What does that mean? It means this is the real Nebuchadnezzar. When he says, stand up, you remain sitting. You will sit for the rest of your life. You will never be able to stand up. He will kill you. He means business. He says, tell me the dream. They said, oh, king, live forever. There's no king who has ever asked such a thing. The thing the king is asking, it's a real thing. And there is no man who can tell the king his dream except the gods who dwell not in the flesh. And the king was so furious and he issued a decree that let all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. For he realized that all along he's been, uh, he's been maintaining them out of the treasury of the royal house, believing he's got people who will help him in times of need. Now he needs them. They are nowhere to be found. The message came out and it came to Daniel. Daniel heard the message and asked, why is the decree so hasty? And the captain explained to him what happened. He said, let us ask the king to give us time. To cut the story short, he asked for a time. He went to his friends. They prayed and God of heaven revealed the dream. And he went before the king and the king said, Daniel, are you able to tell me the dream and its interpretation? He said, O king, live forever. It is not in me, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. He said, you are sleeping in your bed, troubled by the thoughts of your, your head as to who will take over after you. And the God of heaven showed you this, what will come to pass. And in your sleep, O king, lo and behold, you were sleeping, you saw this huge image. Terrifying image, head of gold, chest and arms of silver, belly of brass, legs of iron, feet partly iron and partly clay. And while you're still watching, O king, lo and behold, there was a stone that was cut from the mountain without a man's hand. And it, and it struck the feet of the image and the head, the chest, the belly, and everything came and it became like a, a powder of became like a, a, a powder of this summer powder and was taken away by the wind. And the king said, indeed, this man told the dream. He gave Daniel to be a chief, chief of the magicians. He was the captain of all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel said, I am not alone. I am with my friends, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They were also given other position. But Daniel was the right-hand man of King Nebuchadnezzar. So he was always with the king. The others were leaders of different provinces. So they were not daily with the king. Wow. Now we have a good understanding of, of the background. Let's go now to chapter 3. In chapter 3, remember the dream was a, a head of gold, chest of silver, belly of brass, leg of iron, feet partly iron and partly clay. But the king himself, he erected an image of gold from head to toe. What he, wa what he was saying by that, he was saying his kingdom shall live forever. For when Daniel interpreted the dream, he explained to the king that you are the head of gold. After you, there will arise another kingdom. So he didn't like another kingdom taking over his kingdom. So he erected the, the image of gold from head to toe so that his kingdom sh should live forever. Question. Where is Daniel in chapter 3? For the text was clear that all the magicians, all the governors, sheriffs, treasurers, 
Everybody that was in the cabinet of the king was required to be there. But there is a one man missing. Daniel is his name. He is not in chapter 3. Other scholars say he is not there because he was in a business in another country. That is not true. It was a holiday and everybody was required to be at the plain of Jura. But I'm, I accept the view that King Nebuchadnezzar knew Daniel, that Daniel would not bow to the golden image. Therefore, he gave Daniel an excusable absenteeism. For he knew that when everybody will be bowing, Daniel, his fate does not allow him to bow to images made by men. But one thing he forgot. He forgot that there were three friends of Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And when he said to his herald, a herald is a messenger, is like an angel who went out. Take note, those, those of you who are reading the book of Revelation, compare this book of Daniel chapter 3 with Revelation 13 and 14. For in Revelation 14, you find an angel with a loud voice. In Daniel chapter 3, you find a herald crying aloud with a loud voice. The, the herald in chapter 3 and the angels in chapter 14, they are going to the same audience. Nations, peoples, tribes, and kindred. From different sources to the same audience. If you hear a sound of these types of music, bow down and worship. Whosoever shall not worship shall in the same hour be thrown into the fiery furnace. So you expect that King Nebuchadnezzar, after he receives a message, for he is told later on by the people in the midst, they come to him, they say, oh, king, live forever. There are people who are not obeying your command. You said everybody should bow, but these three Hebrew boys that you've put in high position here in Babylon, they disregard your command. King Nebuchadnezzar said, bring them. And as they brought them before him, he remembered one thing, that indeed these were the friends of Daniel. So now, remember the decree he issued. If you do not bow, the same hour you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. But he is not throwing them in. He is now coming with something called a, 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 a crisis management strategy in order to save them. It is not for the king, but it is for them. He says to them, Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is it true that you do not bow to the image that I erected? He says to them, If you hear a sound of the harp, dulcimer, all this type of music, you bow down well with you. But if not, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. If, but if not, if you bow well with you, if not, you are going to the fiery furnace. And look at what the, the, the challenge he's throwing to them. He says, who is that God that will deliver you from my hands? So he is not only challenging the Hebrews, he is challenging their God also. For he says, who is that God? In other words, he's saying, your God is weaker than me, for I defeated you and your God was defeated. Who is that God that will deliver you from my hand? Listen to the response. No wonder they were 10 times more intelligent than the Babylonians. Listen to their response. In verse 17, rather, let's start in verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. In short, they say, in answering you here, we are not careful. Our minds are made up. We are not going to be changed 
by your threats of throwing us into the fiery furnace. Our minds are made up. Listen, I like the sequence of answering question. They answer according to the sequence of questioning. Look at verse 17. If it be so, the king started by saying, now, if you be ready. And they start by saying, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Our God. Remember the challenge. Who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? The response, our God, is able, and he will deliver us out of your hands. Let's play around with verse 17 and 18. Verse 18, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. If verse 18 is cancelling verse 17, then verse 18 does not exist. For remember what they said in verse 17. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, the, but if not, it, it, it means something else. It does not mean that if God does not save them. It means if the king himself changes his mind, he does not put them in the fiery furnace. Let the king know that they will not bow and worship his God. Let me justify that. For many are saying, verse 18 is saying, but if not, meaning if God does not deliver them, then verse 18 doesn't make sense. If God doesn't deliver them, what happens to them? They are thrown into the fiery furnace, isn't it? When they are thrown into the fiery furnace and God does not deliver them, what happens to them? They burn to ashes. If now they are burned to ashes, how do we justify the following statement in verse 18? Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods. They are dead. They burned to ashes in the fiery furnace, for God did not deliver them. How can they serve when they are dead? Can dead people serve? In the book of Psalms 115 verse 17, the Bible says, the living which will praise God. The dead do not praise God. So Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, when they said here, yeah, but if not, they never meant that if God does not save them, for that was justified in verse 17, saying our God is able and he will deliver us. So they were not saying if he does not deliver them. For if he does not deliver them, what happens to them is death. And when they are dead, they cannot say, let it be known that we cannot save, you, save your gods. How can they save Nebuchadnezzar's gods when they are dead? Can dead people save? Let's continue. Now worship the golden image which thou hast set up. How can they worship when they are dead. For if God does not deliver them, they get into the fiery furnace, they burn to death, and they cannot worship. They cannot serve. They cannot do anything. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know not anything. So to justify that, the, but if not, it means if the king himself changes his mind, he does not throw them into the fiery furnace, then let it be recorded. Let it be known in Babylon that Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego will never worship the golden image the king has erected. Then my Bible says the king was so furious. Understandably so. Because Mind you, he is trying to save them. He is opening a gap for them to escape. And he expects them 
to appreciate. He expects them, at least if they were honest and maybe fearing people, they would have acted like they are tying their shoe laces, act like they are bowing, when deep down in their hearts, they knew they were not bowing, but not Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Remember what they said. We are not careful in answering you in this matter, O king. Let it be known. We will not worship the golden image that you have erected. Our God is able and he will deliver us. The king is so angry. And he looks at the fire. He doubts the intensity of the fire will burn them until they disappear. He issues a decree. He said, let the fire be made seven times hotter than before. Maybe it would have been better if he said, make it hotter six times. For the number six stands for a man. But the number seven stands for completeness. It stands for, for perfection. It stands for totality. So if you play around the number seven, you are inviting God himself in his totality. And they take them. The fire is so hot. They carry these young men. Taken by strong men. Throwing them into the fiery furnace. The Bible records that when they threw them in. The people who were taking them in. Themselves they bent to death. So now the people who are thrown in. You are expecting them to bend to ashes. For the intensity of the heat is from the source and they have been taken into the source and the people who are throwing them are banned by the heat wave from the source. So you expect those who will be landing in that source of the heat to burn to ashes. But Nebuchadnezzar did not believe his eyes. He looked at his subjects and he says to them, did we not Throw in the three. He starts doubting his eyes now. Did we not throw in the three? He says, lo and behold, I see four. And the fourth man looks like the son of God. Question. How did he know the son of God? How did he know there is a son of God? And I am told... His subjects, when they looked, they did not probably see the fourth man. Because his subjects did not throw a challenge. Remember the challenge. Who is that God that will deliver you from my hands? And the God who came to deliver them from his hands, he came. And I imagine him standing, waiting to see him. He said, you called, which God, here I am, come face to face. And he looks, he doubts his eyes, and he says, didn't we throw in three? I see the fourth, and he looks like the son of God. Thereafter, he said, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, come out. And they came out. And as they came out, the Bible records that they did not even smell fire. So the God we worship is not like the other gods who needs to be carried. The God we worship, he sacrificed himself that we be saved. The God we worship, he walks to save us. The God we worship, when we get into the fire, he comes with us in that fire and quench the fire. He is the God who is a consuming fire himself. So he is a powerful God. Let us worship this God. Let us stand fast and worship him. For as it was, so will it be. If you read the book of Revelation 13, you pick up that in Revelation 13, it is said, uh, uh, whosoever will not worship the beast and its image will not be able to buy or sell. It is a bigger picture of the microchism 
of the book of Daniel chapter 3. For Nebuchadnezzar as a king, he stood as a beast and he erected an image. He had his advisors who came and report to the king. Those are the people that are represented by the image of the beast of Revelation 13. Therefore, it is of utmost importance that we read the book of Daniel as the Lord himself said, whosoever read it, the book of Daniel, let him understand. Let us read and understand the book of Daniel. For God wants to save everyone. He is not willing that there should be any that should perish, but that we all come to repent and be saved. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, as Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego stood up for your weight, help us, Lord, be the Meshachs, Shadrachs, and Daniels of our time, that we may worship you in truth and in spirit, that we may not be bought or be sold, but stand and say, as they said, our minds are made up. Let it be known we will not be careful in answering in this matter. For our minds are made up that we will worship Jesus and him unmixed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.